<laughs> Good day everyone. Today I'm going to share a very interesting travel experience with a friend of mine, Christine. Christine is a solo traveler just like me, but she's had some um, strange encounters in different countries, particularly from men harassing her making sexual advances, putting their fingers or their hands where they are not supposed to be. So watch the entire video so you don't miss any of her tips when you are traveling alone. You will need her tips. So let's just enjoy the lake, swimming and chilling with Christine. What a lovely lady she is. <laughs> well, if you have not subscribed to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notifications so you never miss any of my videos. Beautiful. Baywatch, we make it Baywatch. This video is rather a tad too long, but it's worth it because of the many stories uh, that Christina encountered in her travels. And of course, the tips on how to travel solo as a single woman. Women do have problems when they are traveling alone because there are men out there who just think that uh, women should be easy prey and they violate their space, they treat them like they are not uh, human beings. And that is a very terrible thing to do to another person. Well, let's listen carefully to Christina in case you decide to travel solo around the world. <laughs> What is it like hitchhiking and traveling the world as, as a woman? Well, sometimes it can be really difficult, but it's my story, the, the story which I will share now, it's not, only, it's not only about hitchhiking, it's, I think it's about preparing yourself for a travel. You need to be like really, really cautious sometimes you need to be more prepared and as i was when i started my trip to caucas when i was 26 so i decided to go to to caucas i don't know why i think it's because my uh, my mother told me that i have some georgian blood in myself i have a story that uh, my grandmother um, i'm a bit nervous this is my first time talking to the camera <laughs> Oh, that's right. Don't so worry. I have I have a story that the day of the marriage of my of my parents, my grandmother just went to my father and she told him like your father is not your real father, your father is from Georgia. And I I knew this story when I was young younger, but I just didn't realize. And when I was 26, it just popped out into my head, and I was like, hmm, maybe I have just some. Georgian relatives, so maybe I should go to visit Georgia. So I just left my job, I finished my university, and uh, I just had one plan. My plan was to hike in Georgia and to do nothing, just hiking and to meet people, to cook, and uh, I don't know, to just have a good time. First time I went to Azerbaijan. So in Azerbaijan, after I realized that it's a bit dangerous for me to hike there alone and to be in that country alone as a woman, I needed to find myself a European man who has the same aim as, as I had, just to travel. So whenever you go to a different country and you feel yourself insecure, just look for, for another tourist, just look for another guy with whom you can travel together. Uh, don't stay in a place where, where you don't feel yourself insecure, because it makes no sense, you will, you will not enjoy it and, and yeah, you will be scared all the time. And so I found Jacob, he was an amateur hiker, not hiker, he was an alpinist. His dream was to hike around the world and he wanted to hike to all of the mountains in the world. Yeah, this is not his story now, sorry. Sorry, Jacob. <laughs> so tell me, you know when you, when you are traveling these countries, I'm gonna try and stay away from mentioning countries' names because we don't wanna be blacklisted. So when you're traveling in these, um, countries as a single woman, a foreigner in a country, and you are hitchhiking. How do young and old men in 
those countries that you are visiting treat you as a woman? Do they treat you with respect? Do they try to make uh, some advances, like sexual advances? Have you come across anything like that? Well, it depends. But I, I don't think it, that it depends on the culture. I think it depends on the men. It depends on the people's personality. I met really good, really good guys who just wanted to help me and there was no problem. But I also met some, some, some guys who just didn't know how to behave. It's probably because of their, I don't know, because of their different the culture. different culture, yeah. And uh, my experience is how to deal with this kind of man. You just need to be super positive and super self-confident. You should not show that you are scared. Have you had any um, strange experience or any bad experience in your hitchhiking? Yeah, I, I had many. I visited once a country and uh, I got marriage proposals, like five, six marriage proposals per day. And uh, they, would, they were just crazy about, but not about me, they were just crazy about, I think, the tourist woman because they, for them to see an independent woman in their world it's kind of sexy, I think, and um, and it's really hard to get to get out of their way, but you can manage it uh, by showing by showing really big self confidence. In uh, Azerbaijan, um, I went I, I met in a hostel with one Pakistani guy, and we spent together six days, and it was it happened on the third day. We wanted to to see the mud uh, volcanoes. So we went there by, by bus, and then we needed to reach the, the volcanoes. We needed to, to change for a taxi. And there was already a taxi driver because it's working like that. Yeah. They, they are like cooperating together with the bus companies. And he was waiting for us, sat in his car, and he was really happy. He asked me where I am from. I told him that I'm from Ukraine. And uh, he just started to, to be overexcited about me. And he, he asked me, questions if I'm married, if I have boyfriends, and I told him that I don't, and this was the problem. <laughs> you, all, you should always say that you have a husband, or if you have a friend with you who is a guy, you should, you should just say that he is your husband, even if you don't have a ring. Just say that you are together, because this is the only, not the only, but this is a good chance to, to, to avoid any bad situations. So in other words, you're saying, if you're traveling as a woman, in any foreign country, it's better if you meet uh, another traveler and travel together and just pretend like you are, you are married or, or maybe he's your boyfriend. Not that you cannot introduce him as a friend because that way it, it opens up the floodgates yes. for, for these uh, disturbed men, disturbed people to start making advances. Yeah, yeah. if you say that he is your friend, then they, they will not be bothered. They will, they will see an opportunity in you that you are still free and you, there is a chance to have sex with you or to, I don't know, to get married with you because they want to get married, all of them, they want to get married with you. So, but to, just to stay in a, I don't know, yeah. This taxi driver, did he give you a ride? He asked me if I want to drive his car and um, I, really liked, I really like to drive cars and I really like all jigglies. And for me, as I, I, I was, I grown up in, in Ukraine, I was always driving Jigglies. I, this is my, well, it was my first car. So I was really excited and, uh, and I just, I, I told him, yeah, I will drive this Jiggly. Uh, but it made him more excited because I, uh, it made, made me feel like, it made me see like I'm an independent woman who even can drive a car. And, um, and after we reached, we reached the volcanoes. I just put some mud on myself because he told me that oh, it's really good for your skin and it's really healthy. Oh, you and, mean putting uh, mud? You went to the mud volcano? Yeah, to the mud volcano. Yes, yeah. All right. Yeah. So you said put, put the mud on your skin. Yeah. It's good for your skin. All right. Yeah, because it's really healthy. Okay. So he was yeah. grooming you. <laughs> yeah. He yes, was you know, he was grooming yes, me. Yeah, they have to groom you first. But then he accidentally, like accidentally, he touched my breast. Whoa, that's sexual assault. Yeah, so, but... Without permission? Yeah. And it, he pretended like it was an accident? He didn't even pretend. He pretended like nothing happened. He pretended like that's okay. Oh, okay. 
and I was a bit scared that we we will not have time to to go back to the bus station. So I I, I said like okay, nothing happened because it's not so big problem. Let's just go back and and then I don't care about this stuff. Because if you get scared, then he will see it and maybe he will get aggressive. So it makes no no point. So it makes no sense to 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 be scared because because this kind of men, I think they react like, like the dogs. If you are scared of the dog, then the dog will be more aggressive. And this is this happening with this kind of men as well. I, do, I really don't know what, what's behind this kind of behavior. But anyway, then we sat back to the car. And when I took my place, he just accidentally, again, touched my private part. But then again, I said nothing. So you were sitting in his car. Yeah. Firstly, he put his hand on your on, on your breast. Yeah. And then after but that, he put his hand on your private. Yes. Parts. But he just touched it like this. Oh. So it was really quick. Yeah. And and he made a facial expression like it like not, nothing happened. Did, did he apologize? No, not at all. For him, it was normal. I don't know. He and was that's kind of crazy. In his country. No, I don't think that it's acceptable. No, not at all. He was just a crazy he man. Just a taxi driver that you just yeah, met he was just he, he was just crazy. I mean, he probably had some psycholo psychological problems. Oh my God. I would not say that all the men has the have this in in his country. He yeah, he's the kind of man we should avoid. You, you know what, Christy? I'm so sorry that happened to you. You know, because you know when I'm traveling, I always try my level best to um, help other travelers, like uh, more especially women, who yeah. are traveling alone and, um, and seem to be going the same destination. I'll say, let's go together to, in order to avoid these um, this crazy people. In the West, that is um, uh, considered sexual assault. So you, can, you cannot do that. Yeah, I think in the West it's considered a sexual assault, but in the East, it's uh, we don't Touching, we don't count it as a sexual assault. We don't go with touching. We don't go to the police. So we we just we just say like, or we don't say nothing. We okay. just we just we just pretend like nothing happened. So, so in the east, like Ukraine, and Russia, yeah, and or maybe Azerbaijan, maybe we will yeah both. maybe we will just slap him in the face. But women, they are more scared of doing this. They are saying like it it doesn't worth it. Wow. to do this so, so they don't really report it if a man uh, just uh, like what Do Donald Trump said you grab them by the pee um, well it depends it depends it depends where are you for example in this situation we were in the middle of nowhere in the middle of volcanoes yeah. okay. there were no other cars yeah. oh, wow. so I said to myself if I don't I don't know if I will be hysterical and if I, I, I couldn't call a police because we are in the middle of nowhere. Yes. So if I'm hysterical, then nobody will take us back. And it was already dark. So we had no other choice. My, our, other, our only choice was to get back with him. And this is the point where I think when it's not an action, when, when it's like, like touching and you are in the difficult situation, then just be just chill and and pretend like nothing happened, just smile, a, and well, behave the same way as you behaved before. Oh, in, in order and to maintain the peace. Yeah, in so order just, to maintain the peace, so yes. Just pretend like nothing yeah, happened. Yeah, like nothing happened. And when you have the next stop or the next, uh, I don't know, uh, occasion to get out of the car, yeah. then you can get out of the car. Oh but God. till that point, if you pretend that nothing happened, he will be still, still on the road. He will be still, still play with you. Mm. And the, the, the most important is to maintain the play. You have to be, you have to be the same self-confident self woman as you were before. Because if you, if you lose your role, then, uh, then he will feel it. Okay. And then he will feel insecure as well. And yes. insecure will make, insecurity will make him aggressive, yeah. I think. And this is my experience. Yeah. The taxi driver, he was taking us to the bus station officially. But then he told us, like, let's go to the seaside. And I told him, no, 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 because we have to catch the, the bus. And he said, no, 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 we have to go to the seaside. And I said, no, 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 because we have to catch the bus. So I had to tell him like four times, and even four times was not enough for him to understand that we have to catch the bus. So after fourth time, I just, I was, so it makes no sense to force it because I cannot stop the car. I cannot be aggressive with him because he can attack me. So I just said, okay, let's go to the seaside. Maybe he will calm down and we, he will leave us there. 
So I was there with a guy from Pakistan, but it doesn't matter where he's from. Uh, and he just left us at the seaside. After two minutes, he came back and he was asking like, Christina, uh, we should go tomorrow to the, you should, you should come to, with me to the, to, the, to the wedding. And I said like, no, sorry, but I'm going back to Baku. No, 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 you should stay at my place. Come, come on, we, I will put you. And I said, no, 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 thank you, but we are staying here at the seaside and we will go walk back to the city. And he said, no, 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 because it's, uh, it's pretty dangerous and it's suspicious because he took us from the village, the two tourists, and now the cameras in the village will see that the car is empty and only he is driving the car. And I, I said to him, like, I'm sure that there are no cameras, we are not in a European village. And uh, so I was 100% percent that there were no cameras. And he said, no, no, no. And he was protecting himself all the time. He, was, he, was keep, he, he kept telling me that there were cameras and we should go back. And I told him like 20 times and I tried to stay like really positive and really calm. I even touched his arm and told him like, hey man, you are a bit overstressed. Just please leave us alone. I talked to him like in a calm voice. I try not to raise my voice because it will bring some aggressivity in him as well. Yeah, it was really strange because the guy who, who, who was traveling with me, he did nothing in this situation and that was really strange to me. And I don't know what, why, what is happening. I would have been very upset. Yeah, but he did nothing and he, he, he didn't, yeah, maybe it was because I was talking in Russian to the taxi driver. But the guy he was talking in English. Maybe he just didn't have a clue what we were talking about. Maybe he, maybe he didn't know that this situation was so dangerous. Because I was already scared, so I, I my communication skill with, in English or with him weren't the best, because I was not paying attention anymore with, to him. I I paid attention only to solve this problem, and that's all. And so I t told this guy from Pakistan, okay, let's go to the road and let's walk. And we started to walk and the car was following all, us all the way. It was like 10, 15 minutes. And we were walking and he was following and just shouting, Christina, go to the car, Christina, go to the car. And I said to him all the time, like, no, sorry, I hope go to Baku, I cannot go with you. And you still need to pretend and you need to speak with them like with a child. Because I think emotionally they stuck at the, at the level of a, a child behavior so we found we found this road and it was a really big road and I told my friend to go the opposite direction as the car as the car are going because I thought that, that, that he will not follow us there but no he followed us the opposite direction as well he never stopped and he never stopped and then he stopped the taxi and then I and that was the point after like two hours that I got really angry and I said like, okay, if I cannot solve the problem in a home way, we have to, I have to be aggressive as well. Maybe he will be afraid. So he just got out of the car and I told him, okay, I'm calling the police now. And I'm, I was just shouting to him because I couldn't handle it emotionally. And this guy wasn't helping me at all. And I said like, I'm calling the police, but I didn't, ha I didn't have any SIM card. So I was just pretending that I'm calling the police. And at that moment, he just grabbed my hand and he was pulling me to the taxi. The, and then I started to shout to him, like in a really loud voice. And then the, the guy from Pakistan, he just turned to the taxi driver. And that was the first time when he started to speak and he just said to him, what are you doing? Just go home. And the taxi driver <laughs> just sat in the car and went home. Wow. So Christina, tell me, can you give um, the young people a few tips on how to travel as a single woman, traveling alone with your backpack, how to hitchhike, what to watch out for, because there are predators out, out there. There are plenty of crazy men uh, who just want to take advantage of uh, young women. Sometimes there are women as well. Don't think that it's only men who are going to act this way. Women can do the same as well. Just be more, more cautious. Fighting with people in foreign country, it's a no-no. Don't do that because you'll end up in serious trouble. I travel with um, pepper spray. If somebody tries anything, you just need that pepper spray. It will mobilize them for a while. It's not only to protect myself from crazy people or dangerous people, but bears, wolves, tigers, dogs, stray dogs. 
But with pepper spray, you don't have to take it from one country to another because some countries don't allow it. When I get to a different country, I will look for a shop where I can buy pepper spray. If you need any more tips, don't hesitate to leave a message, to comment, or um, send me an email. Let's get back to Christine. The question was, what, what is my advice as, as, as a women traveler? My advice is to stay calm all the time and to ask as many questions as you can. Just ask him where is he from, if you speak the same language, if you don't speak the same language, just look into his eyes and smile, but don't smile too much because then he will look a bit aggressive. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if he puts his hand on your, on your boobs when there are other people, yeah. you can slap him or you can, you can just shout to him. Okay. If there are other people, if you, are, if you feel, feel yourself what if safe. in his car? If you are in his car, you can say to him gently, like, please don't do this again, but you have to stay calm. And you say to him, like, I don't want, I think that it's not a good behavior. And you can say to him that you have a, you have a husband. I think, I think in my, in my strategy, it always, not always, but in many occasions it worked. If I say to them that I have a husband or if I have a boyfriend. So you say your best tip is that when you hit hike, it, it might be best if you put a wedding ring. And uh, sometimes, I don't know, it can be more comfortable on the left hand, so it really doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, it can, be, it can be a good advice to, to, to take a ring with you and that to, to just tell them. So my story was that I was a journalist yeah. and we came here together with my husband and my husband is staying one village aside. He was waiting for me there. I just came to this village because he's interviewing some other people okay, all right. and uh, and we just agreed to meet here tomorrow he will pick me up here tomorrow and okay. for me it worked so in most of the occasions woman, uh, in other ways it's best not to wear dresses yes yeah no 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 don't don't wear dresses or if you wear dresses Very just just system. yeah just just wear something what I try to be as less sexy as I could be Oh, so you shouldn't be sexy. You shouldn't no, not put at too all. Many no, 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 no. Okay, For, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't wear makeup okay. at all. My hair, my hair was just tied like, like this. Okay. And, maybe and, wear a baseball and just hat like me. Yeah, you can wear a baseball hat, mm -hmm. but you can, you can just have a t-shirt which doesn't show your shoulders. Okay. Just a, a, a really big, a really big XL t-shirt. Okay. Just. Don't show just, off your yeah, base. Yeah, not at all, not at all. Just try to be as less sexy, really guys, as less sexy as you can. <laughs> what would you say young people should do, a young woman should do, if uh, you're hitchhiking and a man seems very nice, offers you uh, to um, come to his house to stay for the night? What would be your best uh, advice? For me, always that it works. If I look directly into his eyes, you can even touch his shoulder, talk him like to the child, and tell him like, "No, sorry, it's not gonna work out. I have different plans, or I have my best. My husband is waiting for me, or I have to reach this uh, place by tomorrow, and I don't have time. Just pretend that you are honest. Just try to, I don't know, to, to say." To say anything in a really calm voice, like like your psychologist would do, or like a teacher. 